Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So we have a triple infinite sum for m, n, and k both equal to zero, ranging all the way to infinity, of one divided by m plus n plus k quantity factorial. So probably a triple sum of something like this probably may leave you stump. But if you actually do something in terms of rewriting of the indices, so that's actually the first step. But this can actually uh, be a little bit confusing when you look at it at first glance when we do this substitution, but I can explain this one by one. And then afterwards, we're going to have something of a new sum, but actually it's going to be a combination of both of one of them is going to be an infinite sum, and then some of them are going to be like finite sums, which will make things of the substitution a little bit easier to work around with and make the evaluation, of course, nice. So that out of the way, let's actually just jump right in. So let's suppose that I call the substitution for our new index, for example. I'll say that a is equal to m plus n plus k, and then I'll do a second substitution. We'll let b equals n plus k. So notice that for m, n, and k, so I'll just write this out in full, they're actually both greater than or equal to zero since we're ranking this all the way up to infinity, then we can actually come to the conclusion and say that a is actually going to be greater than or equal to zero. So with that in mind, we can actually now, using this idea, we can actually now create even more bounds to do the substitution of our, all our um, sigma notations over here. Notice that zero is gonna be less than or equal to b, which of course we said that that's equal to n plus k, but in other words, if I were to say that, do a little bit of the subtraction from over here, it's the same thing as a subtract m, which of course in this case, this is actually gonna be less than or equal to a, all right? And then another thing we can note is doing the same thing again. So zero is less than or equal to, so we say K. Then of course, that's the same thing from over here. It's just basically just N and then subtract B. So with that being in mind, of course, that's actually going to be less than or equal to B. So all this together, we can actually now rewrite our new sum as the following. So we have now our first um, sigma notation we're gonna have is that this is actually gonna range from a is equal to zero to infinity. Our next one is, and actually this is gonna be in a finite sum, this is gonna range from b is equal to zero all the way up to a, that's the upper index. And then the last sigma notation over here is that k is equal to zero, and that's actually going to range up to b. Up from now, just one divided by, with that substitution, we said that a is equal to m plus n plus k, so it's just simply just a factorial. Okay, so now with this in mind, let's actually now take a look at the double sum. So we're actually gonna look from b is equal to zero and then k is equal to zero all the way up to b. And we're just um, gonna ups exclude the a factorial from the denominator outside. But right now, we're actually just gonna focus on this following over here. So our double sum we have is b is equal to zero to a. And then now the other one is k is equal to zero ranging all the way up to b of simply just one. Okay. So if we just look at the inner sum over here, we know that this is actually just gonna be the same thing as b plus one. Don't get that confused, because if it was equal to just b, since we have just one times many b's, but we have that, that would mean that the k equals one will have to be that starting index, but we have that k is equal to zero, so you have to add the plus one to that. So now instead we have that this is a, b is equal zero of b plus one, and then if you evaluate this, we know that this is actually a well-known summation identity of the following, just a plus one, and then multiply with a plus two, all this being divided by two. Okay, so now we can actually just go back to uh, putting that substitution back from over here. So now the new, the new triple sum we have that we substituted, so let me just write that same thing in full. So now what we have is, so of course I have it divided by two from over here, so I'll actually factor out that one half. So we have one half, and now everything has just been reduced to just a singular sum. So now we have that a is equal to zero to infinity of a plus one times a plus two, and then all this being divided by a factorial, just like that. Okay, so now this is kind of a bit of a confusing on where we should go forward with this. So this is actually gonna, we're gonna be utilizing a nice McLaren series of the following function, e to the power x. So I just want to note first that e to the power x, the series represent representation is written as the infinite sum. So from, I'm gonna write this index as a is equal to zero just because of the naming convention what we had from before. 
of x to the power a and then divided by a factorial. Okay, so something in a similar fashion, we have a factorial. So where, where does this come from? So what we can do here is now let's actually multiply an x squared on both sides. So I have that x squared and then multiply by e to the power x. Simply it's just, so multiply the x squared here. So that shares the same base. So basically it's just a plus two on the exponent. So the infinite sum at a is equal zero of x to the power a plus two and then divide it by a factorial. What do we, what do, we do from here? So you're gonna notice that what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually differentiate twice of both sides of the x squared e to the power x and then its series representation. Let me just do this one by one. So first we're gonna differentiate the first time. So for, let me first, let me actually write that as first derivative. So just taking the first derivative of this, so that means of course we just apply the product rule. So what that'll give us is just two x times e to the x and then add this with x squared plus or x squared times e to the x, and then differentiate over here. So of course that's just applying the power rule. So this is just the infinite sum, a is equal zero of a plus two, then times x to the power a plus one, and then divided by a factorial. Okay, so let's differentiate a second time. So the second derivative is do this again. So product rule and then a product rule again. So what we have is two times e to the x, add this with 2x times e to the x, add this with, uh, yet again, 2x times e to the x, and then add this with x squared times e to the x. So if I actually factor all this out or combine everything together, I can actually factor out e to the power x. So e to the power x, and then, so 2x, 2x, so 4x, so that means I have x squared plus 4x, and then plus two. Now we just differentiate this side over here. So we have the infinite sum of a is equal, from a is equal to zero. So yet again, just apply the pro, um, the power rule, my said product, power rule. And so what that'll give us is just a plus two times a plus one, and then times x to the power a, and then divided by a factorial. So it looks something of a similar fraction, just what we have over here. So what, what do we do from here? So let's actually just plug x equals one. And so what we have here is that if I just plug x equals one, so that means I have the infin um, infinite sum a equals zero of a plus two, then times a plus one. Then if I plug in x equals one, so that's just gonna be one, all this be divided by a factorial. So this is kind of exactly what we just have over here. So now we just plug one into here. So e to the power one and then one square plus four, then plus two, which is just gonna be seven and then times e, and then just plug this back into over here. So let me actually write this as seven e. And so therefore, let me just call this entire sum i. And so we have that i, which is what we reduced to one half times this infin infinite sum over here. And so the final answer is just gonna be seven over two multiplied by e. And so therefore that is our final answer to this triple sum. You might think that you'd be pretty stumped, but it actually comes down to something nice once we actually, you know, use the correct substitution and, you know, carefully analyzing what we should do from there. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.